Okie dokie, back again. I have no idea. Can anybody tell me? Because I'm, as you know, completely freaking non-techy. My phone keeps saying that um, this recording has stopped. Something about saving file space? I don't know. Anywho, where did I leave you? Vertigo. Um, yeah, so I was in so much pain I wanted to lie down. I couldn't lie down. Um, I had to get up because the room would spin. And when I'd get up, I was in so much pain I wanted to lie down. And it was a freaking nightmare. Um, if I if you turn your head too quickly, any direction, um, look up, look down too quickly, it it will set off the the vertigo. And I've fallen a number of times. I've I've yeah, it's been it's been bad. So um, I'm on a medication now uh, for the vertigo. And again, when we get into the medication part of this, then then we'll get into that a bit more. But um, it is something that I will be on now for the rest of my life. It's it's not, uh, according to my family doctor, that, that I will be having to take that forever because there is really no cure. Um, vertigo, BPPV, can be caused um, by inner ear problems. And I had at one time a physiotherapist, not the lovely woman, that the girl that I was talking about earlier, but another one that was really not very good. Um, and he kept insisting that my vertigo had to do with my inner ear. And I kept telling him, there's nothing wrong with my ears. This vertigo started the day of, or the morning after, but I, I think certainly the evening of the accident. I've never had vertigo in my life. So you're telling me that the minute that car hit the back of my truck, I suddenly developed an inner ear problem. What the fuck are you talking about? So I went to my family doctor and I said, listen, he's driving me freaking crazy. Can you look in my ears? Just, just look in my ears and, and see if you see anything, you know, odd. Like, do you think I have tinnitus? Do I have Meniere's disease? Do I have, there's a lot of different um, disorders of the inner ear that can certainly cause um, a person to have, you know, this positional vertigo. And he said, uh, yeah, whatever. And he looked at my ears. He said, your ears are fine. Like, there's nothing. I don't see anything visibly, you know, just by examining your ears to, to be wrong. He said, close your eyes for me. He said, stand up. So I stood up. He said, close your eyes. And he said, now touch your finger to your nose. And, you know, with your eyes closed, tip your head back. It's not like I couldn't tip back very far because of my neck. But he said, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with your ears. Nothing. So, all right, fine and dandy. So the next time I went to my physiotherapist, I said, listen. I, I asked my family doctor to um, have a look at my ears, um, and he says that there's nothing wrong with my ears. Oh, no, no, he's wrong, he's wrong. And I'm like, really? My family doctor? Mm -hmm. Now you're touching a sore spot. He's been my family doctor since I was 17 years old. And I think he's probably getting close to retirement, and when he leaves, I will be devastated. Um, it's a very long, long, 30, 32 years. Wait a minute. Let me think now. He started practicing in Canada when he, in 1985. So that's what, yeah, 32 years. Yeah, yeah. So been a long, long relationship. Um, do the math. I can't do the math. I could never do math. So it's got nothing to do with the accident. Um, so anyway, uh, he kept going on, kept going on, kept going on, finally went back to my family doctor and I said, okay, can you do me a favor and send me to an ENT, to an ear, nose and throat specialist? Um, cause he, this guy just won't give it up. So he said, oh, for Jesus sake, he said, like, is it not enough for him that your family physician has said, you know, I'm a medical doctor. He's like, not, not trying to, um, you know, be disrespectful to somebody who's a physiotherapist. My God, you guys are freaking awesome and godsend. But this guy was a, a little, you know, not. And uh, he said, it's not enough for him that, that I've said that, no, it's it's not your ears. Um, and I said, no, I said, he, he won't give up. He won't stop. And he said, fine and dandy, we'll send you to an ENT. So he did. Um, the ENT did a full examination and determined that I have um, BPPV, um, and that there's literally nothing wrong with my ears. And he said, you actually have quite acute hearing for a woman your age. At that point, I would have been 51, I guess. Um, and I said, oh, thanks. Good. Something's working. <laughs> um, and he said, yeah, he said, you, you have, um, you know, BPPV from, uh, the head injury from the accident. So I went back to him and said, okay, pfft, there, are you happy now? Cause now, now my family doctor and a specialist who specializes in ear, nose, and throat 
disorders and and diseases and what has said that that um you know i have this this vertigo from the head injury anyway so i'm on medication for that and um that is as i say well under i'm sorry guys oh lord is there a comfortable position if there is one somebody tell me oy vey. um okay so uh i've been complaining of pain in my coccyx my tailbone um from day one from day one i've said as far as my my back and my neck go it hurts from c1 to the tip of my coccyx it's my tailbone's been killing me from day one so uh again cursory x-rays done the day of um not much more than that so um i i now have a new physiotherapist that i've just started seeing um gosh when did i start seeing him january maybe december january like january of this year this guy is the bomb he is so incredibly amazing um such an incredibly amazing physiotherapist such a wonderful guy um he's he does acupuncture on me um he does physio obviously um he does deep pressure point therapy like it's it's he's freaking amazing and really really well educated and 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 knows his shit he knows his shit trust me so i had said to him one day that my sorry guys we're, we're doing a twist here Oh. and there goes my freaking hand um sorry a little spaz here um he had said that where was i okay yeah so i had said to him you know like my my, my coccyx has been killing me from day one and i've been telling everybody this and and not much has really been done and he said, okay, I want you to go to your family doctor and ask him um, uh, either for an MRI. And I was like, no, no more MRIs. <laughs> um, ask him if he's comfortable doing a an x-ray on that area of your body. And that's um, a lot to do with um, exposure to radiation because of, you know, this fella. So I went to him and I said, okay, listen, you know, I've been complaining about my coccyx from day one. Um, it's it's not any better it's it hurts i mean right now i'm sitting on a on a cushion on my bed um i cannot sit on a hard surface like a like a you know a hard bench or a hard chair or something um and my coccyx quite frankly is i mean as as it comes down as your tailbone comes down it comes comes down to you know a point as you're aware of you know right at the top of the crack of your butt you're you know it's it's only that wide right like i'm looking at it upside down right like like this <laughs> oh, jesus oh it's like nano nano i have no idea where that came from don't ask i don't even know anyway <laughs> um uh so i said yeah like i need um i need i need my tailbone looked at and he said okay sure so he said okay we'll do an x-ray on that so the x-ray came back and he said to me, um, I had called him or I had asked him to call me when he got the, the um, results back and he said it came back fine. So I said, okay, good enough. I don't, it, it feels really weird. It's, it's kind of, that was where I was going. So it's, it's like this, you know, at the bottom of your spine, right? Where are we here? Like, oh God, that hurts. Um, and mine is kind of <sighs> tipped as if the the right side of the of the coccyx is higher up than the left it's almost like it's been twisted and it's lumpy and i mean lumpy you should feel this shit this is weird stuff right i've never felt a coccyx like this so anyway so he did uh did the x-ray said everything came back fine and then um when i physically saw the report it said that um they did actually a sacral and coccyx x-ray so sacrum being the very bottom portion of your spine before you get to the tailbone um and that there were no obvious bone lesions which means no you know no bone cancers or, or tumors in the bone or anything which is good um and that there was an old healed fracture an old healed fracture and this was in February of this year of 2017. So almost, almost two years. I mean, it would have been February, March, April, May. So yeah, three months pre 
um, you know, being, being two years post-accident. So, um, from what we can gather, it's, you know, all that force when I was hit that came flying up through my feet and legs and then back through the hands and arms, um, kind of, you know, the, the force came in that way, came up that way. And where did it meet? Right in the middle. And it fractured my, my coccyx. So that would explain a lot why my ass hurts, <laughs> right? Um, they also found a widening, a, a space between S1 and S2 in the um, sacrum, which shouldn't be there. Um, so again, that's a, another injury. Um, so I couldn't understand. This was, I, I have a huge team of, you know, doctors and, and, and specialists and whatnot that take very, very good care of me. Um, one of the doctors that I've started to see recently is a pain specialist and um, in Oshawa and she is the bomb. I freaking love this woman. Um, she's a sweetheart. She looks young enough to be my kid. Um, she's very, very knowledgeable, very awesome, very easy to talk to um, and was delighted with me the first day she met me because she wanted to know what I did for pain management. And I said to her, well, I don't um, take narcotics or opioids. Um, I never have and I never will. And she said, oh, really? Why? And I said, well, with what I do for a living, um, trust me, <laughs> I've seen it and I've seen it all. And I and I know how bad, um, you know, the addiction issues are. And unfortunately, there are a lot of um, people that are suffering from addiction from, I mean, this is the drug of choice today. I mean, in the 80s, it was, it was Coke. In the 90s, it was crack. It, you know what I mean? As we all know today, the, the drug of choice is pills um, and it's become epidemic. And, you know, people putting fentanyl patches in the roof of their mouth, used fentanyl patches. They have someone else's fucking skin cells on them and you're putting them in the roof of your oh, gag. Um, but we all know what it, what an epidemic it has become. And um, I don't. Uh, I'm allergic to codeine, um, and I have the one time that I've been given um, a narcotic or opioid was I was given morphine um, after I had my tubal ligation done in 1993 after my daughter was born, and I don't remember three days. <laughs> like, I'm serious. I had one dose, one dose. I don't remember three days after that. That's how effed up I got on it, right? And it, and I was sick, 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 blah, right? So anyway, yeah, it just, I don't, I don't, um, like the way that kind of stuff makes me feel like, even though I've only really had it once and I know that I'm allergic to codeine because I was given that once as a child and got really sick. And my daughter is also allergic to codeine. Um, and I don't want to become, um, a doctor assisted drug addict, which is, I mean, they're, it's cracked down now and it's, it's really, um, as everyone is, is, I'm sure, well aware that, you know, you can't get uh, a prescription for anything narcotic or opiate in nature from um, the eMERGE, from a walk-in clinic, from, um, you know, there's, there's a, what do they call that? I can't think of what it is. I can't think of what it is, but it's, it's like, um, oh, I can't think of the word. Oy. It's okay. So you've been prescribed 30 pills for a month and you're meant to take one pill a day. They won't refill that prescription on day 29 or day 25 or day 15. No, 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 no. You take one pill for 30 days. Here are 30 pills. If you run out of those 30 pills before the 30 days is up, sucks to be you. You're either selling them or you're overusing. Um, so anyways, yes. Yeah, so all of that being said, I know way too much about, you know, addiction issues with, with, um, you know, having the job that I've had all these years. So I do not do any of that. Um, I do a half an hour every morning. I do a half an hour of very slow, very gentle, very beginner level, um, restorative yoga. Yoga is life. If you have chronic pain, I'm got to look, I got to look right at you people to say this. If you have chronic pain, please, oh, please, oh, please do yourself a favor and start doing some yoga. Without yoga, I, I would not even be able to sit up here right now and do this. I've improved quite a bit with you. If I miss my yoga um, for one day, you know, I feel it. If I happen to miss it for two or even three days in a row because it just, you know, of appointments or whatever, Trust me, I can hardly move. I'm, I'm, I'm limping. I'm in 
agony. Yoga is life. Do it. You will never, ever, ever not thank yourself. Um... So, yeah, I take a lot of ibuprofen, and I actually just had the creatinine levels checked in my kidneys because um, my family doctor was like, you're taking how much? <laughs> and I was like, um, and I mean, this is a person who used to take the odd Tylenol, you know, when I had a headache before all of this. So I have a lot of, I have a Dosset, which I will show you later. I have a Dosset. That's how much medication I have. But I have um, nothing narcotic, nothing opiate in nature, uh, nothing addictive. Um, yeah, because homie, don't go down that road. I have enough problems in my life without adding drug addiction to the list. Thanks very much. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. And I'm quite happy. And I'm a, I'm a vegan on top of it. So I'm quite happy. Um, so yeah, so... Uh, I digress here. Um, okay, so the the new um, pain doctor, the first day that I met her, she, I, I was saying to her that, you know, some days I'll get up and, and I couldn't understand this and I should know better, but I, I think maybe somewhere in the back of my head I did kind of suspect this, but I didn't want it to be true. Because um, again, this harkens back to the whole, you know, drug addiction thing. Um I said to her, some mornings I will get up and, and the arches of my feet, the, the bottoms of my feet hurt so bad that I can, I can barely walk. I can barely wait bear. And then, you know, they'll, they'll hurt for that day. And then the next day, you know, they'll be okay again. But now today it's my right knee is killing me. And tomorrow, maybe my left shoulder. And, and the next day it might be the, the toes on my left foot. I mean, it's just, or my fingers or, or, uh, you know, my back hurts way more than it should because I really haven't done anything because I can't do anything. I mean, I, I can't lift. I can't, you know, I can't do anything. Um, and there's no reason for me to be having this level of pain. And I get a lot of burning sensation, especially in the shoulders where literally it's, it's a, I don't know how else to describe it. It's, it's a burning pain. It feels like you're, you're, you're burning, um, and I, and I think in the back of my mind, I probably, I kind of knew, kind of suspected what it was, but I didn't want it to be. And that is the diagnosis of fibromyalgia. Um, and that would explain why I have this literally head to toe, you know, all, both hands, all 10 fingers, all 10 toes, all, you know, all everything. Um, and that would explain why, you know, why I have that widespread pain. I didn't want to be told that I have the fibromyalgia because... Um, it is unfortunate. And I mean, absolutely no disrespect to anybody who honestly suffers from fibromyalgia because I honestly suffer from it and it's horrible. It is horrible. It is constant, chronic, widespread pain. It's horrible. Um, that being said, and, and, you know, as I said, no disrespect from anybody who actually really does suffer from it, but fibromyalgia is kind of today's um, back in the eighties, I hurt my back. I have a bad back. Um, it's why I can't work. Um, it's why the government has to support me. It's why I need to be, um, munching handfuls of narcotics and opioids all day long. Um, that was what it was back in the eighties with, oh, I hurt my back. I hurt my back because there really wasn't the technology that there is today to prove or disprove whether somebody actually has a, an injury to their, to their spine. Um, and of course now with, you know, today's really in-depth, you know, 3D stuff and, and, uh, MRIs and CAT scans and whatnot. If you, if you claim to have a back injury, they can certainly tell whether you have one or you don't have one. So now, um, fibromyalgia unfortunately has become, um, pretty commonly used, um, uh, by people who are pill seeking people who are, um, addicted to, to opioids or, or narcotics. So, I mean, I, I don't want to be somebody with fibromyalgia. I don't, I, first of all, I don't want to be in all this pain. I mean, obviously, but I don't, it's almost like fibromyalgia has become a label now. Um, another name for a drug addict. Isn't that sound awful? But you know what? Honestly, and I can tell you in my profession that it, it that honestly is is true, and it's very sad, but it is very true. And I and I don't want to be somebody with fibromyalgia, but unfortunately, um, I am. So I am on a medication for that. Um, I'm on Lyrica. Um, what am I on now? Two hundred milligrams a day, every day. It's it's um, hundred AM and hundred HS. 
So, um, and that's, that's non-addictive, non-opiate, non-narcotic. It's actually, it's strangely enough, it's another one of those medications that was actually originally designed as um, a medication to control seizures, um, which I guess it does, or you know, to some degree. And, um, you know, people that were suffering from seizures but also had chronic pain were reporting not only was there a decrease in their seizure activity, but there was a marked decrease in their pain. So they were like, hmm, you never know. So it, it can be used to control certain types of pain. And it's it's like um, like diabetic nerve pain, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so again, my hand's going funky. Um, yeah, so, and it's the same as, um, oh, what's the name of that shit? The one to help you quit smoking, Chantix. Chantix, again, is another medication I believe was originally designed and, and, and you know, created to um, control seizures. And people who were suffering from seizures but were also cigarette smokers um, were, I guess, reporting a, a decrease in their seizures, but also reporting less of a desire to smoke. Um, and they were like, hmm, what do you know? I guess we can use this as a uh, smoking cessation aid. And apparently it does work. I never tried it myself, but apparently it does work. Um, okay, so I think that's about it for now for the physical injuries. So now we're going to get into the emotional stuff. Here we go. Where's the roll of toilet paper? <laughs> ah, shoot me. Um, pause because I'm going to need, I'm going to need a roll of toilet paper here. So let's just hold the phone folks. Hello. Are we recording? What? Wait a minute.